Hello YouTube, it's been a while. I think it's time for me to come online and start sharing what I've learned about Lyme disease. If you're familiar with my story, I've had chronic Lyme for close to three years now, and I've been just scouring the internet, scouring the local libraries, seeking help professionals, and just learning anything and everything I can about Lyme disease in order to reach my remit remission. So the first thing I wanna say is that you can reach remission. Since I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you or someone you know has been affected by Lyme disease. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you three steps you can take and I believe that everyone has to take in order to, uh, you know, we don't like using the C word or at least uh, all the books I read, they don't like saying the cure word, but reaching remission is what they call it when you are symptom free from Lyme. And that is what I wish for everyone. So these are the three steps you have to take. And what I'm also going to do is share all the different options that I'm currently aware of uh, because what looks like remission for me might look a little different for you. So the very first thing you have to do is you have to kill the Lyme. This is number one. And when I say kill the Lyme, I really mean Lyme cells, which are spirosets. Lyme spirosets are these crazy, really super interesting... Um, cells and life forms when you really think about it because they have this flagella-like tail and it allows them to outrun your immune system. It's why, it's one of the reasons why Lyme is so incredibly hard to cure is because it can just outrun, outmaneuver your, your immune cells. It also has this cork-like screw head and what that does is it allows it to travel throughout your body, throughout your bloodstream and screw into different areas of your body. Uh, joints, ligaments, bones, and even your brain. And people that have been affected by uh, neurologically, uh, we call this neuroline. So if you're having like brain fog or you feel like your brain just isn't quite what it used to be, this could be uh, a reason for that. So we have to kill these guys. And what's important to understand is your very best chance at doing this is when you are first contacted by Lyme, when the tick is first embedded within you and it transfers Lyme throughout your blood. So that's when a cycle of antibiotics actually can kill the Lyme. And this is what we call just normal, natural Lyme disease. It's when we either take antibiotics or we don't, and that the Lyme survives, that we create, or it creates rather, these chronic conditions, which is what I'm dealing with and is what I'm gonna get into. But the sooner you treat it, the better chances you have at just kind of stopping it. What happens when you don't kill it or you don't kill them all? Because this is like, think of it like an army that's like invaded your body. That's kind of the way I think about it. And like, if you kill half them, that's great. But the other half can keep procreating and creating new Lyme eggs, new Lyme cells. So as it enters your body, the longer you leave it, the more it can travel throughout your body, uh, inhabiting different areas. So it's really important to treat quickly if you can. And what people typically do for this is doxycycline. Unfortunately, a lot of the time it is not prescribed for a long enough period. I use Iliad's guidelines now, um, which is a six week cycle. When it was given to me, I was only took it for two weeks. I've even read stories of doctors, physicians giving people like two pills and saying that that will clear it up. That six week period is where I would say it's like a minimum, but I would look at Iliad's website, which I'll share down below, uh, just to make sure that you're doing it for the right cycle. Um, the other thing is minocycline. They call this, I believe, the cousin of doxycycline. And I've read that it can be very good for people with brain issues, so neuroline. Um, I've personally done two cycles of doxycycline, one cycle of minocycline. So this is your, kind of your first um, normal, regular option for killing Lyme, that is antibiotics. The one thing I will say is I think they're the best thing to take at the very beginning, and they tend to not be great the longer period of time that you've had it. I know people that have gone like on antibiotic IV therapies for like over a year, and it may have helped, it may have killed some of it, but it just can't get the job done. And what I believe is happening is the Lyme is inhabited, it's gone too far into the body, and this is when we need some kind of alternative therapies, 
which is what I'm going to get into now. Um, the easiest to understand is just herbs and tinctures. I went and I saw a naturopath. I was lucky enough to get into one of the best Lyme literate naturopaths here in Nova Scotia. He's been great in helping me and we created a tincture specific for me. So there are certain herbs that naturally will attack and kill Lyme. But the other thing that this tincture does, it's specifically made for the symptoms that I have. So if you went and saw a health professional, maybe they could help you uh, make a tincture that would be for your specific symptoms. Because we're all a little different. Uh, there's a, just a wide variety going on within us. Um, I'm going to write down in the description box all the different herbs, all the different tinctures that I'm taking just to kind of share with you. And also because I'm not quite sure how to pronounce most of them. The most basic ones that I know are like Japanese knotweed, cat's claw, Chinese skullcap, and I am not going to attempt at even uh, pronouncing the other ones. So those will be down below if you're interested. But just the idea of working with herbs, working naturally, myself included and a lot of others, uh, definitely prefer this route than using pharmaceuticals. And the only time, personally, I'm saying everyone's different is at that very beginning stage, I would take uh, antibiotics. Um, other therapies that I've heard of, that I've worked with, is a Rife machine. Actually, the only two people I know who have Lyme disease that have recovered, that have reached remission, did so using a Rife machine. So I was incredibly lucky to be able to use the Rife, and then I was graciously able to get a Rife machine, and I've been working for, with that for the last year and a half. Um, Raymond Rife is the person who created this machine. He's also the inventor of the microscope. Incredibly smart person. And if you go online and use Google's name and the Rife machine, you're going to get some like controversy. You're going to get people saying that they've cured Lyme disease using this thing. And then you're going to get people saying that it's complete bullshit. It's some whack job. There's no uh, real scientific literature behind it. You really have to, like, this is just the reality that we're in as Limeys that you really have to go out there, uh, search for your own things, your own information, and do what's best for you. That's why I'm going to give you all these different options. It's going to take a little while, but I'm going to go through all these different things so you can kind of pick and choose uh, what's best for you. So the Rave Machine, it's a pricey machine, um, but I have realized through using it, it does set off a Herxmeyer reaction, if you're familiar with that term. But when we're killing Lyme, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a Herxmeyer reaction. And I'm going to get into that into step two, but that's what's going to show us that we're actually killing the Lyme. This is like a, it's a good sign, even though you feel like shit. So the Herxmeyer reaction is when your body has a reaction, and we call this a flare-up. We usually feel sick, and like I said, all of our symptoms are different. For me, this is headache, sensitivity to screens, sensitivity to lights, um, sound. Like, I went through a long stretch, a long period of just not even listening to music because any sound was just pain. So silence, darkness is just what I needed. But the point being, um, that is one method, is the Rife machine tinctures, antibiotics, they cause the same reaction. Um, the fourth, yes, uh, there was another therapy I used, my naturopath actually recommended it, and this was UV light therapy. So this is one I'm not super familiar with, but they shined light through a UV uh, on my blood. And it would kind of cycle through different colors. And apparently this is extremely good for your blood, which is really important because, like I said, that is the vehicle which these spiro sets use to travel throughout your body. It travels through the bloodstream. So it kind of makes sense. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure, I'm not up to date with the scientific literature on these things, but like I said, you have to just keep testing trial and error and finding what works for you. So those are the four things I've used that I've seen work in my own personal experience. Um, the other one I'm just going to mention is kind of cool. It's actually my, it was my next step if I felt like I needed to do something else, but I've been feeling really good these days. It's one of the reasons... You're seeing me make this video and that you haven't seen me before. 
when I'm not making videos and you're not seeing my presence, it kind of means I'm going through the ringer. And that's what I've been doing for, you know, the last year and a half or more, is I've really just been whacking Lime, uh, attacking it every day. And I want to now come online and I'm feeling good, I have energy, and share what I've learned with you guys. So that fifth cool thing <laughs> that I saw, uh, highly controversial as a lot of this is, was using bee venom. So this girl was ordering bees in the mail, which you can order bees in the mail, kind of crazy. And she would take them out and she would line them up on her spine. Um, and I, again, this is something I would have to like look more into. It was actually, I was planning on doing this, but then I got uh, an opportunity to get a Rafe machine. Um, so that's kind of the route that I've taken and it's worked for me. So that's another thing. There's like a documentary online, I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll also share that down below. But okay, kill the line. However you do that, cool, do what works for you. Number two, which was like a, a huge moment for me in my healing journey. It was about a year into having Lyme disease. And again, I was just reading a book. And what I realized was they were talking about how important detoxification is. Number two is detoxification. And what I realized was, holy shit, it's been like a year since I've sweat. I haven't sweated since I got Lyme. And there's lots of different reasons for this. When you have a compromised immune system, your body just can't produce sweat uh, as well. I've also read that like your body's ability to produce sweat is like a really good sign of health. Um, so when you have a compromised immune system, sometimes you have trouble with this. And also just that inability to be physical. So I used to go for runs and work out and do these different things. But since being ill, this just became so much more difficult. And actually what would happen is if I physically exerted myself through running or working out, it would kind of shock my immune system and I would end up getting sick for like a month or two. So it really sucked because there was a big long period of me just not accepting what was going on, going for a run and then just being ill for like a month and a half and it was not fun. So detoxification is a hugely important factor and what happens is after you've killed the Lyme, we call it die off. When the Lyme cells are in your body, uh, you've killed them, there's all these dead bodies lying around and your body needs to expel these dead bodies. It needs to get rid of them, it needs to clean out your system and you do that through detoxification, through sweat. There's lots of different options too. Um, so obviously my very favorite method of doing this is like a wood-fired sauna. I absolutely love it. It feels just right for me. Other people I know uh, have enjoyed infrared saunas and obviously we don't all have access to a sauna. It was actually just recently that a gym uh, opened their sauna back up. They were closed due to COVID and where I was usually going for my sauna was closed. So we all have these different struggles we have to go through uh, in finding uh, the tools, professionals, and methods that we have to do to heal. So if you can get in a sauna, absolutely do it. Like sweating is so important. If you're in a spot where you can be physically active and you are sweating, then I would say that's great as well. Whatever you have to do kind of thing. Uh, what was best for me was I went online when saunas were closed and I bought a cheap, affordable, very small steam sauna. And it's very basic, it's very easy to use. And like I said, it's affordable. I say that because I know this is something that a lot of Limeys struggle with. Lime disease can be an incredibly expensive uh, thing to go through. There's so many different examples I could give here, but just just the, some of the supplements I'll say today. But just to give an example, like I inquired uh, at a Lyme clinic once of how much it would cost to go there and get treated. There's there's just none of them where I live. This one was in the States. And they're like, hello, Kyle, how are you doing today? Thank you for inquiring. So six months would be $100,000. We can set you up with one of our suites. Um, yeah, would you like to confirm and continue? I was like, hmm, like I'd like to, but I'm gonna have to pass. So part of my journey has been finding like affordable ways to cure this thing. Uh, it's likely slower, but if it works, it works, right? 
So that sauna tent, as funny as it is, as simple as it is, was a huge game changer for me because I gave myself the ability to sweat every day. So I took antibiotics at different times. I, took, I was always taking my tinctures. Uh, I got the Rife machine and I did a couple of UV light therapies. But then every time, and here's the trick, right after you kill it, jump in this sauna immediately after. This is to lessen the Herxmeyer reaction, lessen the amount of time that you feel like shit. Um, I think I'm going to go on to step three. There's a lot more I could say about detoxification and a lot of these things. That's why I plan on making more videos. So if you have questions about anything I'm talking about, please write it down below. And I also just want to take this moment to kind of stop, pause, and if you are someone out there that has Lyme disease, just kind of give me a hello. Like, I'm just kind of curious to how many people out there are watching this video that do have Lyme, that are dealing with it, or know someone that is. I don't really know why else you would be watching this video, but I'm curious. And if you yourself have any tips, any hints, anything that can help other people, put that down below. So step three, we've killed it. We've detoxified. Now we boost our immune system. And there's so many different ways we can do this. I'm just going to share with you what has worked for me. I'm a huge fan of doing things the natural way, getting it through diet, uh, getting natural sunlight. But when you can't do these things, maybe you live somewhere like Nova Scotia, where it's sometimes cloudy, sometimes it's winter, sometimes the sun's just not out, then you have to supplement. So the first three things I'm going to share with you are supplements and that's vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc. And the reason I'm saying them first is because not only are they gonna help boost the immune system, but I've read that they're incredibly important for fighting off against COVID. So it's kind of like a double whammy there. And I've heard people recommending up to five to 10,000 IU uh, vitamin D. That's what I took when I got COVID and I just kind of hammered these three things and it really helped me out. Um, other supplements, other things you can use are Moringa, Spinurella. These are great for the immune system. I just kind of throw them in a smoothie. And then getting things through your diet, uh, things like blueberries, broccoli, spinach, ginger, onions, garlic. What I'll typically do is I'll take a lot of that, I'll chop it all up, and I'll mix it in with some nice organic eggs. So those are just some examples of getting things naturally when you can and then supplementing when you can't. The other thing I'll mention is the gut. The gut is so incredibly important and sometimes people with Lyme do have problems here. Um, so getting yourself a healthy probiotic can be super helpful. Also, it seems just like the higher IUI you can get, the better. I forget how much mine is, something billion, but it's great. And then I take that at night and I take coconut kefir in the morning. So those are ways of helping out your immune system by what you're putting in your body. And then you want to just also do things like, you know, during this times, it's important to be social, to have a support group, to have people support you. Uh, Lyme can be very isolating, uh, especially during this time, so this can be incredibly important, and just like reducing stress, and it, there's kind of like two other Lyme video ideas I have bouncing around in my head, and one of that is kind of like the mental things that go on with having Lyme disease, how to overcome them, how to go through them, what they're like, um, so that's one video, and then the other video is living with Lyme, seven tips. These are the next ones that will be coming out soon. So if you're interested in more videos to help support you through Lyme disease, definitely click that red button and subscribe. So let's go over our three-step process again. We have step one, kill Lyme. Step two, detoxification. Step three, boost immune system. Then we would wait till our symptoms are gone. Then we would step one, kill Lyme. Step two, detoxify. Step three, boost your immune system. Which the symptoms go away. And we keep doing that until we reach remission. Keep doing that until our symptoms are gone. All right, guys, that was my three steps to killing Lyme disease. I hope this video was helpful. 
I wish you the very best in getting to remission. And yeah, until next time. Peace.